In 1947, a man was walking through the devastated streets of Osaka, Japan on a cold winter night. In the aftermath of World War II, the entire country was ravaged by poverty and hunger. Much of the city's infrastructure was destroyed, leaving millions homeless and food was scarce due to a terrible harvest season. With little to eat, many people waited in long lines in the shivering cold to get a meal. During his walk, the man stumbled upon one of these lines in front of a dimly lit stall and a delicious aroma caught his attention. Sensing something special, he approached the end of the stall and saw people gathered over bowls of steaming ramen noodle soup. From this experience, he realized how much people were willing to go through to enjoy the nearly universal comfort food of noodle soup. But more importantly, he was deeply convicted to help feed his country so no one would go hungry again. What he witnessed would change the course of his life. Despite being sent to prison for tax evasion and becoming broke and penniless due to a business failure, the man persisted and persevered. Eventually, he built a company now worth $7 billion and spawned a brand new industry that feeds more than 300 million people every day. This is the inspiring story of Momofuku Ando and the rise of instant ramen. Ando was born in 1910 in Taiwan while the country was under Japanese occupation. Tragically, his parents died when he was a young child and so he was raised by his grandparents who owned a kimono fabric store. From an early age, he gained first-hand experience of running a business and he developed a strong entrepreneurial drive that carried throughout his life. When he was 22, he followed in his family's footsteps and started a textile business. He eventually moved to Japan and enrolled in Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto. Over the next two decades, Ando became involved in many business ventures such as the manufacturing slide projectors, charcoal production, he sold engine parts, built prefabricated houses, and eventually founded a school which soon landed him in trouble with the government. In 1948, he was convicted of tax evasion and served two years in jail for providing scholarships to his students, which was illegal at the time. However, this wouldn't be his last mistake. Ando served his time, and once he was released at the age of 40, he started a new career in the banking industry and worked his way up. Within several years, he became the president of a credit union. During that time, he was able to provide a stable environment for his wife and three kids. But in 1957, tragedy struck again. A chain reaction of events caused the credit union to go bankrupt. Not only did Ando lose his job, he lost his fortune, which was invested in the union. Suddenly, everything he had worked for was lost, and the only asset his family had left was their home. His life had hit rock bottom, and he was consumed by guilt and shame. In that dark moment, his mind kept replaying his memory from years ago of the people waiting in the shivering cold for a warm bowl of noodle soup. He recalled the hungry faces of the people standing in line, and he could relate to their feelings of hopelessness and worry. He even remembered the deep desire he had to end hunger in his country because of the suffering he had witnessed that night. He began to think about how special and comforting a warm ramen soup is to many people. Then he started considering how appealing it would be if people could make ramen quickly and not have to wait. A ramen that would be affordable but tasty and easy to prepare. So easy that you just need hot water. But most important of all, the ramen would last a long time so people could store it away for when it was difficult or impossible to prepare most meals. If people had ramen like this, he was certain people would never go hungry again. Ando realized this was an opportunity to invent something the world has never seen, something that the world needed, something that the world would love to eat, and something that promised him redemption from his guilt and shame. So he got to work, and as the story goes, he transformed a backyard shed into a makeshift laboratory with all the kitchen tools and materials he needed to make ramen noodles from scratch. For an entire year, he dedicated his life to making his ramen a reality without a single day of rest, and slept only four hours a night. Day after day, he experimented with different ingredients, and he failed countless times. But he didn't give up. Through constantly learning by trial and error, he eventually came to a key realization, that making noodles is all about balance. He had to get the right mix of ingredients to get the right texture and taste. So with more iterations, he finally arrived at a noodle recipe that achieved the perfect balance he was looking for. However, making the noodles was just the easy part. Ando still hadn't solved the most challenging problem of all, he needed to figure out how to make his noodles non-perishable, something that has never been done before. Not only did he have to figure out a way to dry his noodles so they were preserved for a long time, 
but he also had to make the noodles ready to eat by just adding hot water. Ando experimented with different ways to dry his noodles, but nothing worked. This went on for months and months, but he couldn't find a solution. One night, he happened to be in the kitchen while his wife Masako was cooking. He observed her preparing tempura and deep frying it. Her tempura batter was made of flour and water similar to his noodles. She coated her vegetables and meat in the batter and fried them in the hot oil which caused the water to evaporate, leaving behind tiny cavities after it was dehydrated. He suddenly realized that deep frying was the answer all along. This was his big breakthrough moment. Back in the shed, he tried frying his noodles in hot oil and it forced out the moisture, giving them the non-perishable quality he was aiming for. They became hard and stiff and would not decompose or deteriorate. Then, he took the dry noodles and poured hot water over them. Within about two minutes, the noodles absorbed the water through the tiny holes made during the frying process and made them soft again. He stirred and took a bite and was relieved that the noodles were tender and chewy just as he expected. His persistence had paid off. Ando finally invented the product we now know as instant ramen. On August 25, 1958, Ando launched Chicken Ramen, the world's first instant noodles. He decided on flavoring his ramen soup with chicken broth to have broad appeal. In his 2002 autobiography, The Story of the Invention of Instant Ramen, he wrote that by using chicken soup, instant ramen managed to circumvent religious taboos when it was introduced in different countries. Hindus might not eat beef and Muslims may not eat pork, but there is not a single culture, religion, or country that forbids the eating of chicken. Despite the innovation and the convenience of his instant ramen, it wasn't a runaway success at first, and this was mainly due to the high cost. When it was introduced, it cost 35 yen at a time when people could buy a bundle of udon noodles for 6 yen, so food wholesalers and distributors were hesitant to buy the product because they didn't believe it would sell. Another issue was that Japanese people at the time preferred fresh food, which made his packaged processed product less appealing. Ando needed a catalyst to get his product mainstream. His opportunity struck in 1959 when Mitsubishi Corp, a massive Japanese conglomerate, approached Ando's ramen company, Nissan Food, to help launch a far-reaching corporate campaign to lift the nation out of poverty. In an effort to get the country back on its feet during the post-war industrialization boom, Mitsubishi wanted to help feed the poor so that they could work in the factories and participate in the economic growth of the country. Mitsubishi favored Ando's instant ramen because it could be stored for a long time and could be easily distributed to distant areas of the country where poverty was most widespread. After this, chicken ramen quickly gained a reputation among Japanese consumers and sales took off. Demand grew so rapidly in those early years that Ando's production line had a hard time keeping up with the orders as the wholesalers and distributors, who were once hesitant just a year ago, waited in long lines with their trucks to get Ando's ramen into grocery shelves. While his product was revolutionary, the insatiable demand for it can be partly attributed to the massive changes happening in Japanese society at the time. With assistance from the US, the country was undergoing rapid urbanization as it rebuilt after the war. The economy was booming as people went to work, started businesses, and new industries cropped up overnight. The country was beginning to prosper, and a middle class began to emerge that had even more purchasing power than before the war. However, people were spending more time at work too, for better and for worse. In the midst of this economic and social transformation, instant ramen became a staple of the new middle class, where working families were short on time but hungry for comfort food after a long day. Ando had bigger ambitions though. He wanted to take his product international, but no one could have predicted how he was going to change instant ramen forever. In 1966, he traveled to Europe and the United States to meet with distributors who were interested in selling chicken ramen. As the story goes, in one of these meetings with a US supermarket chain supplier, Ando served samples of his ramen, but noticed that some of the people broke the noodle block into smaller chunks, placed them into paper cups, added hot water, and ate with forks. Once they finished, they threw the cup and fork in the trash. From this experience, he realized that Western culture had different eating habits than Japanese culture, and he had to adapt. He decided he needed to make it even easier to enjoy instant ramen by packaging it in a cup. Now while we may take for granted its simple design and function, Ando and his company spent 5 years developing what we now know as cup noodles. 
At one point, there were nearly 40 prototypes under development to achieve the perfect container that will be the packaging, the cooking, and the serving bowl all in one. Not only that, but the size and shape had to be suitable for holding in one hand. At the end of the development, Ando settled on an oversized styrofoam cup due to its lightweight, good insulation, and low cost. On September 18, 1971, cup noodles was introduced in Japan. However, as before, retailers were reluctant to sell the product because it was four times more expensive than the regular instant ramen at the time, and it was considered bad manners to be eating while standing. Ando realized he needed to give the new product momentum, and so he spent heavily on advertisements and sales promotions. His company created vending machines that dispensed hot water so customers would prepare and eat cup noodles immediately after purchase. And he focused on dense pedestrian zones for direct sampling events that drew large crowds of young people. Eventually, cup noodle was introduced to the US market in 1973 and then to other Asian countries, Latin America, and Europe. Just like with the original instant ramen, the flavors and ingredients were developed to reflect the cultural preferences and tastes of each country and region. Cup noodles quickly became an international phenomenon and is now a staple in billions of people's homes. Today, the world consumes more than 100 billion servings of instant noodles a year, according to the World Instant Noodle Association. It has become a source of sustenance around the world that is unrivaled because of its affordability, convenience, and durability. It's difficult to underestimate how many people have been sustained by instant ramen during some of the most difficult times in modern history, just as its inventor hoped for more than 60 years. As for Ando, he passed away in 2007 due to heart failure at the age of 96 in his hometown of Osaka, Japan. Even though he officially retired in 2005, he remained active with his company, so much so that just days before his death, he visited the Nissan factory in Osaka to give his annual New Year's message. But his reputation went far beyond his company. To this day, he is considered a national hero for helping to feed Japan. Thanks for watching.